Hello everyone! Uh, if you've enjoyed my previous videos uh, featuring chess sorcery, then you're really gonna love this one. Uh, when I see this game, uh, I imagine Rashid Najmedinov watching the game and uh, saying "nice," uh, because the game is the game is uh, well out of this world. Uh, it was played in 1968 in a Spanish Championship. It was played between uh, Fernando Segovia and uh, Juan Curbelo. And Mr. Uh, Segovia was, I believe he was an international master. I found his rating, he was rated around 2400. Uh, but I couldn't find any photo, so uh, the hoodie guy again. I know you guys uh, really hate it that the hoodie guy loses every game. Uh, but I will try to find a game where uh, Mr. Hoodie uh, uh, beats a very strong player. Uh, so let's see the game. Uh, Fernando is white and uh, Juan has the black pieces. We have e4, c5, knight to f3, d6, d4. C captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and knight to f6. Knight to c3, uh, a6, and uh, bishop to c4. Uh, we have e6 and bishop to b3. Uh, bishop to e7, uh, bishop to e3, and uh, Juan castles. Uh, queen to e2, uh, we have bishop to d7, uh, queenside castle, and b5. Uh, and white plays a3, not allowing uh, b4. Uh, queen to c7. Uh, king to b1, getting out of that uh, c file, so it's not directly fr in front of the black queen. Uh, knight to c6, and white plays g4, preparing to push the kingside pawns. And uh, okay, uh, here black has to find uh, some interesting plan. Uh, in this position, black played rook 8 to c8. And it might be tempting to play a move like b4, but this is, uh, well, this would favor white. Uh, for example, a captures on b4, uh, rook f to b8. Uh, g5 and after knight to e8, f4, uh, rook captures on b4 and rook h to f1. Uh, this is, this seems like uh, white's attack is happening uh, before black's attack. But if you if you if you like sharp positions, uh, you might even enjoy playing this for black. Uh, but after g4, uh, Juan decided to go for rook a to c8. Uh, we have f4, now e5, uh, knight captures on c6, bishop captures on c6, and the g5. Uh, white uh, decides to sacrifice one pawn, uh, so his attack would happen just a little bit sooner. Knight captures on e4, we have uh, knight captures on e4 and bishop captures on e4 with the attack on the rook on h1. And rook h to g1, now preparing to push even further. Uh, e captures on f4, not allowing any f5 ideas. Uh, bishop captures on f4 and we have bishop to g6. And it seems like uh, black stopped uh, all of white's counterplay. And uh, black has uh, a lot of pressure on this c2 pawn with the queen and the rook and uh, with the bishop on g6. Uh, but Fernando doesn't agree with this. He plays h4. Uh, we have rook f to e8. And uh, it seems like uh, Juan stopped Fernando from pushing uh, the pawns further. As now uh, Juan is threatening all sorts of devious discoveries after this bishop moves. Uh, but uh, again, Fernando disagrees. Uh, he pushes h5. And okay, it seems like uh, you do get a free pawn and, uh, well, uh, Juan plays bishop captures on g5, opening up a discovery on the queen. Uh, but Fernando, again, disagrees with this. He plays h captures on g6, sacrificing his queen. Uh, rook captures on e2, and we have a g captures on f7 with check. And king to h8. And, uh, well, here white has the option of capturing this bishop, and it seems like it's a free piece. Uh, black doesn't really have any threats here, the bishop is guarding c2. Uh, but Fernando has a different idea. Instead of capturing the bishop on g5, he plays bishop captures on d6 with a tempo on the queen. And now this bishop is guarding f8, the queening square. Uh, so queen to, queen to c6, still uh, keeping the pressure on c2. And rook captures on g5, only now grabbing the bishop. And, well, uh, if you count the pieces here, I mean, uh, if you give pieces value and then count them, the material is about equal here. Uh, but uh, white's bishop on b3 is completely uh, protecting black's king from any threats on c2. And this pawn on f7 is a monster. So it's really hard to find a game plan for black here. Uh, if you would like, you're welcome to try and find a plan for black. Uh, but uh, Juan actually completely uh, misses the idea here, and he plays rook captures on c2. And he does this with the idea of bishop captures on c2, uh, queen captures on c2 with check, uh, king to a2, now queen captures on d1, uh, f8 queen, 
uh, rook captures queen, bishop captures uh, uh, queen on, uh, uh, sorry, rook on f8, now threatening the g7 pawn, and after g6, well, black is completely winning here. Uh, but, uh, unfortunately, after rook captures on c2, uh, Juan completely missed Fernando's idea. Fernando plays bishop to e5, now threatening bishop captures on g7 with checkmate. Uh, so, okay, uh, we have uh, rook to c1 check by Juan. Uh, still not uh, convinced that this is uh, this is bad for black. Uh, but Fernando, of course, plays king to a2. And uh, the threat of bishop captures on g7 checkmate is still there. So, he plays uh, queen to h8, now guarding g7. And, uh, well, what do you do here? Uh, it's perfectly fine to capture the rook and c1, this would be winning for black, but as Fernando played the game in great style, he would also like to end the game in great style. Uh, and we have rook captures on g7, uh, again, uh, with, with amazing sorcery. Uh, queen captures on g7 and now rook captures on c1. And what's the idea here? Well, uh, it's, it's, pretty <laughs> it's pretty outstanding. Uh, if you play rook captures on c1, uh, you get uh, pawn to f8, you can either pick a rook or a queen, and this is checkmate. And if you don't grab the rook, if you, for example, grab the bishop with the queen, well, then you get rook captures on c8 with check, king to g7, now uh, f8 with queen, check, and, uh, well, black is getting checkmated in a couple of moves. So, what do you do after rook to c1? Uh, well, uh, Juan tries rook to f8, and now even more sorcery from Fernando. He plays rook to g1. And this is terrible. Uh, you can't capture the rook because, uh, well, your queen is pinned from the bishop on e5. And if you capture the bishop with queen captures on e5, you get rook to g8 with check. Only move is rook captures, and then you just play uh, f captures on g8. You grab a rook or a queen, and it's checkmate. So after rook to g1, uh, Juan tried one more idea. He played rook captures on f7, now protecting his queen on g7. Uh, but... Uh, well, Fernando just played bishop captures on f7, and, uh, well, here uh, Juan really had all he could handle, and in this position he resigned the game. Uh, you can't capture the bishop on f7, your queen is pinned, you can't capture the rook, again, your queen is pinned, and, uh, again, uh, bishop captures on g7 is a threat of checkmate, and if you capture the bishop, uh, you get once more rook to g8 checkmate. So, in this position, uh, Juan resigned the game, facing a certain doom, and uh, this beautiful uh, masterpiece was created by Fernando Vicier Segovia, uh, the Spanish international master. Uh, I, I think he was an international master, although I'm not sure if any of you know, uh, please do share in the comments. So yeah, that's the game. Uh, this is my third game in the, in the uh, featuring uh, some serious chess sorcery. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, John Ratke, Dave Pierce, and uh, Joel Meshi for your contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.